Thank you, Joachim. Good morning. Welcome to the conference. Uh, my role here for the next uh, 15 or so minutes is to give you a flavor of what it takes to put a technical program together for a conference like this. Not a small task. But before I start, let me thank first all of you that are participating in the technical program, from the ones that submitted papers to the panelists and others. Without you, this would not happen. So I really appreciate your help and all of us do. With this, uh, let me move on. The, um, I was going to give you a little background that you all are aware of, I'm pretty sure, but still it should set the stage for how we may want to think about this conference in a technical sense, and you will see what I'm talking about in a minute. I was going to give you also a flavor, how did we come up with a technical program that you now see, what are the highlights of the program, and some interesting paper statistics. And then I will extend the thanks to a few people that really deserve that. This is the key to our big picture. When you're talking about electric cars, you have three infrastructures, if you will, that merge together. One is the power grid. We have to charge these cars. The other one is the transportation system. We have to move these cars around. And the third one is the built environment. The built environment is a technical term that describes any structure that you build, including uh, charging stations and surrounding structures, smart garages or any other facilities that will have uh, charging stations. So all of that comes together in an integrated system. Now, what is so important about this when you look at the technical program? Those are independent things, more or less, today. And the cars are actually linking this in a new way that uh, at this scale that we are anticipating has never been done before. And uh, this brings uh, interesting points here. One point is that the business communities associated with these particular infrastructures have not had a reason in the past necessarily to interact as much as they may have to now. And this is a big issue because um, in order to understand each other even, you have to speak the same technical language, and we do not in these particular communities. And so that creates a challenge. Relationship between the companies hasn't been established for a good reason in the past, now has to be established. That's a new challenge. And then there are impacts that one cannot even imagine that come across different infrastructures. You may say, nothing is new here, I don't know what you're talking about, but think about it for a minute. If you take a car and you move the car from point A to point B, the state of charge on that car will be different when you arrive to point B than what it was at point A. And both in time and space, that car that is basically a load to the electrical system, changes. The electrical system does not have mobile loads today and uh, has to anticipate the new development where this load moves around and actually changes its characteristics as it moves around. That's just one example of things that are quite interesting that are emerging here. So anybody that would suggest that there is a simple solution to this deployment of electrical vehicles in the future uh, probably needs to rethink their position because the business communities and the R&D communities that innovate will find the ways that will amaze you all as we move forward or amaze us all as we move forward. Now, the other complexity in all of this to decide what to talk about in these conferences is the landscape or the ecosystem. You can see here just some examples, of course, this is not very complete, of various parties that are involved from the business standpoint, from charging stations to vehicles to 
others. And uh, to get uh, all of those together to share their experiences and share their knowledge is not an easy task. The problem that we have is that we do have quite a few events around the world and in the United States that are car shows, that are, there are events where vendors would come and present what they have. And that is very good. If you wanted to attend these events, you could go probably every other week to one in the United States. However, we need conferences that can, like this one, drill deep into the technical issues and try to educate all of us what's involved in this. Even though we have very good solutions, very good products, there's no question about it, and a big offering of these products, this is only the tip of the iceberg. There are other things that need to be developed for this technology to penetrate at the levels that we expect it to penetrate in the future. There are other issues that are involved. Before the, uh, besides the technical engineering issues that are in the middle of this tinker toy, we have a policy issue, economics issue, environmental issues, and societal issues. In the middle of all of this is a person, a consumer. It might be an organization for the fleet, but for the most part, it's you and me, consumers. And we have our behavioral uh, patterns, we have our understanding of how all of this should affect our lives, and we have our role in all of these areas that are around. So how do you carve out uh, an area to investigate when there are so many interactions and when you pick up a society like IEEE, for example, that is so versatile, how do you cut across the IEEE to actually meet all of these different uh, needs? That's not an easy task. So we had a job that we had to perform to how far to cut out, so to speak, and be comprehensive and not yet lose the big picture. That was not an easy job at all, again. As, what, as already was mentioned, there are quite a few IEEE entities that have participated. To my knowledge, I've been around IEEE for a long, long time. I have not seen an event, that doesn't mean that there wasn't one, but I haven't seen an event that has this many participating parties from IEEE in a conference. That creates a challenge in itself. All of our societies are very eager to collaborate, but they are also eager to protect their interests and to advance their interests. So to get the balance in this conference of all of these interests was not easy. However, as you can see, we succeeded, so whatever was not easy appears easy to you, which is good. That's how it should be. Now come to... Um, the Technical Program Committee focus. We have engaged quite a few people in this process. Just to give you a flavor of the numbers of people involved, if you look at the attendees of this conference, we may have anywhere from 500 to 600, as I understand, that have registered. In the background of this, you have over 500 authors, as you will see in a minute, that have participated in writing papers as a matter of fact, over 800 authors that were engaged in writing papers, but some of those papers were rejected. So we actually boiled down to about 500 participating authors. And then on the review side, we have probably close to 200, between 200 and 300 people involved in reviewing papers and providing uh, different suggestions. So it's a massive participation that was under, in, in the background of this conference. And that led in the early stages of deciding the areas that we want to cover. What you see in the parentheses are the numbers of papers. If they are in black, that's in the paper sessions. If it's in red, it's in the poster sessions. And you can see roughly where the, <coughs> excuse me, where the clustering is. And I'm not gonna go over that because you can see it but obviously, the balance of interest is not equal across all of these areas. So to anticipate what might be the topics of interest was a challenge because you never know what is going to come back to you in terms of the papers. But fortunately, we anticipated pretty well what the topics might be. 
We did reshuffle a little bit this into different sessions. So when you look at the sessions, um, or different topics rather, you will see some mix that is not showing here. That was just the fine adjustments that we had to do. As you are well aware, we have uh, 26 paper sessions, one poster session, a lot of panel sessions, almost a dozen, and uh, uh, quite a few technical tours. And I invite you certainly to participate in all of these as much as you can. Unfortunately, some of these events are overlapping, so you, you will have to make your choice. Here's a, 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 an overview of how many papers were accepted and how many were rejected. Um, we don't want to, uh, you know, uh, be proud of the rejected papers, but uh, we do want to be proud of the quality of the conference and the accepted papers. So we were quite uh, stringent in the review process. Now, unfortunately, to various reasons that go beyond our control, at times, some unaccepted papers were actually never fully submitted because the people didn't quite understand how to do that. Um, this speaks incidentally to the uh, cultural difference in the different uh, societies and different uh, groups inside and outside IEEE. As you may know, this conference was not open just to IEEE members to submit papers, but to anybody. So in certain areas of technical competence, people are not used to using particular systems as we did the EDA system for submission of papers. So it took them a while to learn how to do that, even though it's really not that complicated. But some of them even um, gave up because they were not ready to put up with a formal system of submitting papers, which is a shame. But again, that tells you a little bit about the cultural difference out there in the professional communities. Uh, another anecdote to share with you is that a lot of people that had papers accepted in a poster session thought that that's a second grade type of paper uh, without realizing that in the IEEE we do this routinely and papers are equally valued. Some are destined to the poster session for a given reason of giving more time for discussion. Actually, it's a beneficial arrangement. And some authors regretfully even rejected to participate after their paper was uh, accepted because their paper was post, uh, allocated to a poster session. Those are small things, but they do matter as we move forward into the future with the conferences like this. The cultural uh, understanding of the professional requirements is different in different communities that we're putting together. In any case, we got closely to, well, 165 plus minus papers that were accepted that are of a high quality. This gives you a little uh, breakdown of the papers that were submitted uh, by the number of authors and percentages per regions in the world to the left and papers that uh, were basically accepted. Uh, interestingly enough, the United States was first in the number of submitted papers, but not the first in the number of accepted papers. Uh, we had uh, 295 authors participating on the papers. Those are papers with multiple authors, as you can imagine. And uh, the, uh, accept, the uh, percentage was 34.7 for the United States. In the accepted papers, we had 157 authors and 31.1 percent of accepted papers. It is also telling you that certain regions around the world, like Asia Pacific, Europe, Middle East, and so on, are very active in this area as much as we are here, if not even more active than we are here. Now, that's a good news. That's a very good news. This is a worldwide um, event, not uh, just this conference, but the whole event of introduction of electrical vehicles. I do apologize. This is a little bit uh, small print here uh, for some of you to see, perhaps. It's certainly for me, small print. But uh, it gives you breakdown per countries and authors, and it goes uh, left-hand side and continues on the right-hand side. This is only for the accepted papers. And I'll let you study this for a second. But uh, 
suddenly the prevailing um, participation is, after all, uh, from the United States in the number of papers, and uh, then from Japan and Germany and Korea and, and so on. Um, there are about 30 countries that are participating, and that's a pretty good number. We, we're very proud of that. Now comes the most pleasant part of this, and that is to acknowledge people that have uh, made this uh, happen. Now, this was the first conference. The topic was very complex. The logistics of doing this were far more complex than the logistics of doing a traditional conference. I can assure you of that. I served on many conferences in different capacities in the past, and this one was a real challenge. Another thing that was happening with this conference is the time. It was not our friend. We had a very short time to organize this conference. So there are various things that could have been done better. Anything that you want to blame along those lines, blame on me. Don't blame on these people here. They are the people that spent an enormous amount of time to make this happen. And uh, I'm not going to go one by one. You see the list there. I want to thank them. Uh, as an example, I just want to thank uh, Joachim. I don't know where he is. Uh, I exchanged with Joachim more emails in the last year than I have exchanged with anybody else, any other person. And I receive, as many of you, about 200 emails a day. And I receive the most from Joachim at every given time of a day and night. I was, uh, you know, uh, praising myself for being the one that works at night and you can receive emails from me at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, you can receive from Joachim nonstop, 24-7. I don't know how he does that. Uh, he might be cloned or something by some other person, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, let's give a round of applause, actually, to the people on this list. Thank you once again. Uh, and uh, last not least here, uh, is the list of uh, technical program uh, committee members and also the track chairs, co-chairs. Each of these tracks had a chair and a co-chair and those are part of the technical program committee and we added a few more people, uh, quite a few. We tried to be uh, as international as we could be and uh, I think we succeeded. In closing, um, let me say a few words of uh, wisdom, if I may call it that way. That is not necessarily my wisdom, it's the wisdom of all of you that we learned through by pre-viewing your papers, reading them. All of these papers that you have submitted, most of us went through actually all of them. So here is what's in front of us, uh, based at least on that input. We first of all have to value based on all of this that we received, the enormous asset of ideas that are both innovative, innovating and, bo and bold. There are a lot of interesting ideas in these papers. Of course, some come from the environments of academics with some experimental background. Some come from industry. Some come from all walks of life, if you will, related to EVs. But nevertheless, the variety of ideas is, is quite unbelievable. It's, it's, it's all over the spectrum of possible things you can do. And I would particularly send a message, if I may, to the business community. The business community is certainly in the business of making this happen. We may uh, you know, claim that the governments are involved and everybody else is. No question about that. Everybody else is involved. But the business community is the one we're looking up to to move these things forward. And to that community, I would like to suggest that they very carefully, which I'm pretty sure they are, uh, look into all of these different ideas that are put forward at this conference. They will certainly offer new business opportunities that are quite, quite interesting. The other point I want to share here in closing is the importance of standards. I don't need to dwell on it. Everyone in this room has been exposed to standards in some way or the other, I'm pretty sure. However, when you have a global development, 
a truly global development. I can think only of a few like this, as this is. Then the question of coordination of standards and development of standards and acceleration of standards and all of these things is crucial, crucial to the success of such a business endeavor. We have many, many companies in this business that span globally. There are not just in one market, but I, basically all of the markets around the world. And uh, what I learned from my visits, uh, frequent visits, incidentally, to China and Korea and Australia and South America and other places, is that we do not have a full coordination of standards at all. We are making big strides to achieve that point. One organization that I have to mention is in the United States, Smart Grid Interoperability Panel, SGIP, that is coordinated by NIST. Some of you may be familiar with that organization. We have several people here attending from that organization. I happen to be serving on the governing board of that organization. That organization is coordinating standards for the smart grid in many areas, including electrical vehicles. But it can only coordinate to the point that everybody who is involved in that participates. So we certainly invite you all to participate. SGIP is now signing agreements of understanding with many regions from China to Korea to Europe and uh, stands to be perhaps the organization as we move forward for coordination of standards. With this, with a point on the business opportunities and the standards that go hand in hand, I would like to close this brief overview of the technical program and would like to thank you all for participating and we look forward to the exchange in the days to come. Thank you.